Hello. We are just gonna let some people join because I'm sure they're still missing. Hello. You are live and you are confirmed live, correct? Yep. Okay. Oh. That's the dog saying hello. Bark, bark, bark. Alrighty, well, it's Tangent Tuesday again. Oh, yeah, wait, I forgot. I can't do that. Um, can you somehow hear the, the Discord noises as people join? No. No, the dog. Doubtful. Okay. Well, anyway, it is it is Tangent Tuesday on the 26th of October. Yes, it is still October. It's October. Not I, I have to... Okay. When you think of months, how do you remember which is which? Because to know which is October, I basically have to go September, October, November, December, because it's 7, 8, 9, 10. And you then I have to... Eight, no, you didn't say July. July no, is 7. I know that, but September, October, November, December is 7, 8, 9, 10 in terms of the prefixes of the names. And then you've got to, re to remember that there's two extra months in there because we don't have 10 months, we have 12. So month 10 is October, November, December, three months back from December. What? Because sept, oct, nov, and des form and such means seven, eight, nine, ten. And so that's that's how I remember which month is which at the end of the year. That makes no sense. Yeah, well, I haven't memorized that October is the tenth month. To me, October is month that has eight in its name. And you've got November, December, nine and ten, which is eleven and twelve because you have to, you have to do some translation math because oh, it's just July, December is well. September, October. Yeah, I don't think of it that way. I just I've got I've got July and August down, but. To tell September and and November apart, I have to remember that September is seven and November is nine. Okay. Can I just say it's kind of sad that you have to? There's like you're you're what like twenty something. Yeah. And you still having trouble know, knowing the twelve months of the year. Yes. You have a degree in computer science. Yes. Nice. Because knowing what the months are in English isn't important for computer science. Knowing that it's month eleven is. I mean, yes. Okay. Which is why I prefer the Japanese concept of months. Because... Just, isn't Japanese concept of months just you say the month and then a number what month it is? I don't remember, yes. Nigatsu, Sangatsu. Yeah, you, it's, you just say month. You just say you, it's, 11 It's months. literally, yes. It's literally just number month. Yeah, it's like 10 months. Jugatsu. 10th month. But that's boring. I mean, if we're going to go with the history of months... Mo a lot yes, in English of them... it all comes from Roman times and the Roman gods and... No, a, a, a lot of them are Roman emperors You're who right. named months after themselves. Right, this is this is why September, October, no November, December, 7, 8, 9, 10. Those used to make sense until... Aug uh, 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 Augustus sees uh, Yeah, until Augustus came along and said, we need to have a month called August. I'm just going to add it in there. There's also, he also wanted his month to have more days than the other months. So he took a day from February and added it to August. Is that why it's 28 days? I believe so, yes. Okay. I believe if you look at why February has 28 days compared to other months, it's because whenever an emperor decided they didn't want their month to be the month that had the short... That, it's like, oh, this other emperor got uh, took a day... One guy wanted... One emperor wanted his month to have an extra day in it. All the other emperors have followed him. Like, why does this guy get a special month named after him? This is My why month should have the same this number. Is, <laughs> this is why we have 28 days in a month. Because people just kept taking days from it. Yeah. But once you take one day from February, it's like no one's gonna, no one cared about the first time. Yep. So what? No, who's gonna care about the second or the third? Actually, I, I, I don't know. I think I, it would happen twice because. Yeah. Yeah. There were there were two months that were added to your ten months. Um. Yeah, it's it's confusing. Um. Though if you if you do that, it's like why aren't months twenty eight days because of a. Uh, lunar calendar, wouldn't that put you at? It's because we don't use a lunar calendar. I know, but if you technically, if you use a lunar calendar, wouldn't it be thirteen months in the year? Because basically, you've got that twenty eight days to thirty days. That wouldn't line up. If you use a lunar calendar like that, you would end up your lunar calendar would be off season, 
all the time. Yeah, that's 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 the reason why we don't use a, a, a lunar calendar because the the months as they exist are designed to line up with seasonal changes, not lunar changes. Yeah, if you did a lunar calendar, what ended up happening would be, let's say, if you had thirteen lunar months, like you were saying. Lunar month seven would slow if it st- if it was summer. Not the sun, Cherry. Actually, the the uh, the Earth's position around the sun. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's we. Yeah, it's not the sun that so the calendars are based on. It's it's how long it takes us to do one full rotation around the sun, which is not a perfectly circular rotation like you see in all the diagrams. Mm-hmm. It is. But that's also why. In a lunar calendar, there is no concept of a leap day or a leap second. In a regular calendar, the or what's it called a, a a sidereal calendar? I don't know the exact um, calendar. The leap year, the the leap second, and all that. That is to try and match the soul days with it's it's the match that we're it's, on a twenty four. It's hours trying time. to make sure that you're that you that you're in the same place of the year. That that January third is always January third is the same place in the seasonal year, yeah. consistently. The reason why the reason for that in, uh, indiscrepancy is because the the calend- the time system that we use where we go between days is based on our rotation, uh, so we have day and night. Right. Yeah. Because while the calendar days are done f- are done based on us are rotating around the thing. So while yes, you can just while it, while it is. Deep, quite close. You are a few minutes off each day. Yeah, uh, uh, as Cherry is saying, a year is technically three hundred and sixty-five point two five days. That is accurate, kind of. It's point two five and some more digits, which is why you have leap seconds as well. You have leap seconds. Um, you have and leap years, and also you don't leap year every hundredth year. You skip one leap year. Yeah, yeah, you. You also skip certain leap years because think, be, because three six five point two five is not accurate enough. Yeah. I think it's. I think they they agreed upon when they were doing this all the math and stuff to make sure the time lined up. That um, they skip that you do a leap year every four years except for um years the millennial are year divisible by a hundred or something and then there's something else that they do yeah. because the, even that's not accurate enough and yeah. there are leap seconds. I know um, they. I know they calculated this like that. The point where they would have to do the next adjustment to fix all the uh, to fix the minor errors over time would be in about eight hundred years. Mm-hmm. But they decided that was good enough for them. Right. Um, I actually eight hundred years when that has a put. I has a forgot problem, to we'll do, do it. Can you there. please post the ten and Tuesday link on the Minecraft server as well as an announcement so people can join it? Uh, also, if you posted that, which reminds me, I forgot to do this. Yeah, we need to go back and actually name the episodes as well because we have some names we could do. Um, but so yeah, we have that. Um, but yeah, so you got that. But also, uh, I remember hearing that um, it, it gets confusing because you cannot use uh, Earth calendar for astronomy because um, yeah. that whole, as you mentioned, the twenty-four hour day is how long it takes the Earth to do one full, full. Axis rotation. It, it, no, it's not though. It's it's not one full rotation. It's one full rotation compared to the sun. Because we're also going around the sun, you actually have to turn slightly more than three hundred and sixty degrees to yeah, get back to, to, get, to get back to the same place compared to the sun. That's where a twenty four hour day comes from. However, that means that if you're using a twenty four hour c- clock when you're looking at the stars. Your stars are going to move a tiny fraction every day because the Earth's actually not going to the same spot each 24 hours. Okay, yeah, there's Cherry's got the exact number of days in, yeah. in a year. It's 3.65.24208614511. But so. 365.24208614511. Yeah, and, and, and I believe, as, he, as Ethan mentioned, I think the skew is something like five minutes a day. Yeah. Um. But so an ast- an astronomical clock has to use a different time. I think five minutes a day is way more drastic than I was thinking. I think it's only a couple of seconds actually. No, it's about it's about five minutes a day. I'm Don't forget that it, skew. Okay, yeah. I'm 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 looking skew in terms of how far off you get compared to a to an astronomical day. Okay, okay. Uh, I think it's about five minutes. Um, I mean, if you think about it, it's it it's got to basically skew by by twenty four hours. Over over three hundred and sixty days, um, more or less. So, 
it, I mean, that, that if makes you sense. want to talk about weird time things, like people saying it's like one day being 23 hours, 56 minutes, I don't know where Malcolm got that statistic, but there are places in the world where, like, is it Iceland? Where, like, certain times of the year, at 11.50 p.m., it can be uh, middle of the, it can be middle of the day in air quotes, like the sun just doesn't set. That's not middle of the day. It's it, and yeah, it's the sun sets, but it sets to a place still above the, still above the horizon, so it's still daylight outside. Yeah, there, there are a lot. Of, there are quite a few places in the world that are like that. And once you get to the uh, the closer you get to the poles, yeah, that's basically once you get above or below a certain. I think Alaska has it. Point. Uh, some parts of Russia do, Canada does, but no one lives in that part of Canada, so. Some do, but yeah. Um, okay, when I say no one, 90% of the people in Canada live okay. within so 100 Okay, so you mentioned Russia, and I had been doing research before this because I stumbled across something yesterday that I want to talk about. The Russian Night Witches. Okay. So in World War Two. Okay. There was a female-only regiment of, um, uh, 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 in the Russian Air Force, which got the name the Night Witches. Okay. This was a bomber regiment, whose purpose was to essentially dis- uh, 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 disrupt German operations during the night, so that so that they couldn't get arrest. They weren't doing much damage to things other than just dropping bombs on the on the Germans at night to make it harder to do things like maintenance and it's sleep. Not that bad, Jerry. Yeah. Um, now the interesting thing about them is that they they got the term night witches because they flew old, quiet biplanes that they basically turned the engines off when when they were coming in. So they, 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 they turned the engines down to basically idle. So it was, so, so it was almost silent. Them okay. coming in. And so the, the Germans were, were calling them night witches as kind of a, a, a mockery because it sounded like just some, some, some flying brooms coming in. Um, yeah, but but that, so... Del, I know you said earlier with the bombs, it's like, oh, not much damage with bombs. To be fair... If you bomb they a were, bunch of dirt... They were small damage. bombs. They were small bombs. But we're still talking small bombs compared to big bombs. Like, okay, they aren't two, 250 pound bombs. A 50 pound bomb still hurts. Yeah. And does damage. It's just that you can't... When you drop a bomb like this, it's not like you can drop it anywhere near the tank and kill it. You've got to actually hit the tank. Um. So, but... As far as what they did with these things, these planes were old and slow. Um, And when I say slow, these planes were so slow that their normal cruising speed was slower than than the stall speed of the fighters trying to shoot them down. So uh, so other planes, if they... It made it very, very hard to actually shoot these things down because they were too slow. Nice. Um, And they operated at night. So so they they were low to the ground, in the dark... Dropping bombs, um, and I haven't had much time to, to to research any of the extra details on it. Just what I do know is that they were highly successful, uh, and I think that's something something like fifteen percent losses, which over the course of the entire campaign. Oh, over, over the course of, of of the war, yeah, about about fifteen percent losses. That's not bad for planes that were flying extremely low, extremely slow. Um. Not my question. And and had like some of these pilots flew a thousand missions. Nice. So like this was a lot of bombing. <laughs> yeah, only fifteen percent over the course of a four year war. I I don't think they, I don't they probably want I don't for think the they acted for four years because it took a while to convince Stalin to allow fi- a a female pilot res- a, 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 a group to actually operate, but yeah. I mean, they, but I still, over a long campaign, only losing 15% of your... Uh, well, that's a, they didn't have parachutes. It wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, you they were, too, you're too low to the ground. They were so low, parachutes wouldn't have mattered. So they didn't bother. Yeah, because parachutes, again, only function if you're at a certain altitude. They do not work for low altitude. Well, it's, it's not really that function. It's that you've got to fall a certain distance before a parachute has, has time to open, catch the air, and actually slow you down. Yeah. 
And so, if you fall, it, like, if you're not high enough up, it doesn't matter having a parachute because you will hit the ground before it actually fully opens. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to think of, of which tangent off from that topic because, well, I was just, I was thinking about the weird, um, like, weird rules and how people, if you look at the course of history, rule, that when rules get in place, people don't listen to them and it usually had the opposite consequences of what you want. You have to be mm -hmm. very careful. So, this is a concept that was brought, that gets brought up in a lot of psychology and economic studies. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember the term for it, and it makes me sad. Um, but it deals with unintended consequences, or in trying to do something, you can cause what you're trying to... If you're trying to prevent something from happening, you can cause it by trying to, to, by trying to regulate it. Mm -hmm. In this case, India. You probably heard this one. Snakes? Yes. That's Snakes. That, I, thought, I thought that's where we were going. Yes. I don't know if how many people have heard of this story before, but during what was it, 18th century, 19th century? Uh, I think it was probably 19th. I think yeah, it was it early was, 19th. It was century. An, an issue with cobras. Yeah, yeah. Issue with a lot of cobras in, uh, you in England controlled India. India. Mm -hmm. So while there were mass amount of cobras around, people thought that it's like, how do you get to deal with all these mass amount of cobras because they were causing problems? Mm -hmm. First thought, let's pay people. To kill them for us. Yeah, so basically, I think it was every cobra tooth or every cobra head that you bring in it was every will, co I think will, it was every cobra will pay head. you so much. Yeah, yeah. So, that, so yeah, it'd be like, we'll pay you, I don't know, I, I don't know what, what the currency of the Probably not very much. A pound. But yeah, let's let's just say in in money today, I'll pay you two bucks for every cobra head you bring in. Or yeah. five bucks sort of thing. Yeah. Something like that. Well... I am now a poor person that, 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 that's trying to make money off killing cobras. And I don't mind if it's a bit dangerous. But I, I've got a thought. I'm being paid f for cobra heads. Well, I can go out and get wild cobras, or I can just breed them. Yes. And then kill them and give the heads... And make money that way. Ah, uh, Dell's Dell. I like I like Dell's and and Mocha's media response. But once they start hearing what's going, yeah, on, it's like, oh, yeah, they, they start. Oh, laughing. yeah. So so now I'm being paid to get rid of cobras. But the best way that I can make money from that is to catch cobras and then breed them. Yeah. Then make the a government. Cobra farm. Yeah. But so now the government's caught on to what I'm doing and stops paying for the for all for all the heads because they aren't paying to breed cobras. So I now have all, all these cobras that are worthless. What am I going to do? I mean, you could kill them, but that takes a lot of work. I mean, it is dangerous. So I'm just going to like, well, I've got this box of cobras. I don't care. I'm chucking outside. Yeah. And so yep, we end up go, with Mocha. we end up with more snakes than when we started. <laughs> yes. So that I mean, uh, the other big example of this that I would give is what is the word? I had it and then I lost no. it. It's not that you get nowhere, Jerry. You paid a bunch of people... To make the problem worse. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you pay people to make the problem worse. So, that didn't work. Um, it's a, another... A similar thing is... Is it abolition? No. What's the term? You are thinking of abolition. Abolition, yeah. It is abolition. Which is this the... This was in the US. Same <laughs> issue with alcohol. Yeah, the banning of alcohol in the US. It was actually... Which amendment? Hold up. My brain is not working today. What's up the 15th? Uh, abolition. No, I'm the 18th now. Uh, really? It was 13th? It was the 13th Amendment, apparently. Okay. What was the 15th then? Uh, I don't know. Well, the 13th Amendment was to abolish alcohol. I think the 19th Amendment was to abolish the 13th Amendment. Mm hmm. So it didn't work very well. Um, yeah, prohibition. Prohibition in U.S. history is very interesting. If you look over there, history of it. it wasn't wasn't prohibition the one that said that you can't serve alcohol indoors? Um, because I just remember that there, there was some ban against alcohol in indoor, um, indoor establishments. So what some people did was they drew a little hole through the roof, and said that that there's sunlight coming in. It's outdoors. We're good. I don't think that was that. I don't think that was the that probably did happen with abolition, uh, with prohibition, but um, prohibition dealt with uh, 
That was probably more of a statewide prohibition because yeah, yeah, while, yeah, yeah. While, a, while, a while a countrywide prohibition was, uh, was in force uh, at b- b- about the beginning of World War Two, mm-hmm. it was not. There were states that were banning it before that point in time. Um, which is why, yeah, at the time you had what the concept the, of uh, the, wet the, and dry states. The thirteenth is slavery. Oh, that's why I said abolitionist. I I googled the wrong word. I am not the most. When I said my when when I said my brain wasn't working. Was the okay? It's prohibition, which I believe is the eighteenth, right? Or is it the nineteenth? Uh, it's the eighteenth. Yeah, eighteenth. Eighteenth was prohibition. Nineteenth was I guess. Yeah. Not so this is what yet. happens when you don't double check your words. Because I just said abolition because I was like, it was the banning of something. Yeah. It was. It was the banning. It was the banning of no, slavery. But, of alcohol, no, but no, no, but see, something. prohibition versus abolition. Prohibition is the banning of something. Abolition is the the eradication of something that's already going on. I guess. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, pro- uh, but with the whole prohibition thing, it caused a lot of. Well, so correction, thirteenth amendment is slavery, eighteenth, the, and the eighteenth is alcohol. I think that, and that means the twenty-first. I think is the one that that abol- that removed that the. Hold up, twenty-first amendment. So it's the twenty-first. Yeah, yeah, and the and the and and the twenty-first was the undoing of that. Yeah, so, so the eighteenth amendment. Banned alcohol. The twenty first amendment said the eighteenth amendment is dumb. Mm-hmm. Don't listen to it. Actually, Del, you might be right. Uh, I think the uh, the holes in the roof wasn't alcohol. I I think it was the COVID lockdowns. Because you 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 can't have so many people inside a bar during the the early lockdowns, and so what they would do would was they would drill a hole in the roof. And now it's not a building; it's a gazebo. It's outside, and so now we we don't have to to adhere to the people limits inside the building. I think I think that was early twenty twenty COVID lockdown um, stuff. Yeah, no, I I don't remember. I don't remember any of that stuff. But then again, I wasn't paying much attention. So, but going back to yeah, this, I, was, I was watching all the news about the riots and all, all, all yeah. that was going. It's like this is interesting. What's yeah. going on now? Yeah. When I was looking at so going back to the thing of prohibition, it was started by was it something Wheeler? What's his name? I say interesting, not interesting, but at well, the same well, time. Well, what's but, his name? Yeah. Hold up, hold up. I need to I need to do some googling. Can you keep people entertained? Uh, entertainment. Um, prohibition. What does entertainment mean? It means enter. Why is it called entertainment? What am I entering and what is tame? Because you... Wayne, Wayne Wheeler. That's his name. Did I succeed? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you succeed in entertaining people. Okay, so Wayne Wheeler was... So, the per- Prohibition Movement started... It was, it was first started... Again, it was around the states and everything. It was a big deal. Uh, some states were banning it, some weren't. But most of that was started by um, women's... Uh, women's movements who were trying to get the co- uh, who were dealing with uh, people being drunk all the time at home. My 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 husband came home. He was drunk, and then he started drinking some more and got more drunk. No, oh, thank you. Yeah. So they they started a lot of the prohibition movements to prevent stuff. Um, key fun note for this: I'm not going to go into too much history of it because I don't haven't studied it too thoroughly. Uh, there was an old lady who was known as the Wrecker. She would go to bars with an axe and start breaking them down with the axe and bricks. And nobody stopped her. Oh, she got stopped. She got arrested. And then they were like, oh, yeah, no, it's it's like she's a harmless old lady. She's like seven. In other words, no one's going to believe that the little old lady was axing down the store. So we just let her go. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. So she and I guess and also would, also I don't think anyone I would wanted think, to be the person to arrest the seventy-something-year-old lady. And I would also assume that all of the people, all of the mus, muscle men there, wouldn't admit that, 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 that they got overpowered by that old lady. Not even overpowered, probably just, just scared of the old lady with a big axe. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, ig- ignore the phone. <laughs> Um, but that's a highlight from part of the women's suffrage, or not women's suffrage. Well, but actually, no, women, the women's um, women's suffrage. We're talking about now. Uh, no, no. So, the, so the women prohibition groups are also uh, most of them also lined up very much with the women's suffrage groups at the same mm-hmm. time. They are oftentimes coincided together. So, well, yeah, because it's 
I'm not so sure it's so much as just being a woman. Also, so by much as it's 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 the kind of person who gets involved in in political activism. Uh, but so by the general, way, for so yeah, of course they're going to Suffrage is the right to vote. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Oh, I, it, I don't think it was not so much framing Cherry as more like don't. Who wants to be the guy who shows up and arrests a nice old a nice old lady who's probably be a nice old lady? Well, I mean, I to the I officer. do think that the the first time that you hear this, you go, I think you had a bit too much to drink, mate. <laughs> probably. Um. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, that brings up a really good point that I'll get to later, Mocha, with the um, who wants to arrest their grandma point. Uh, but with the prohibition movement, so it started with all of those women suffrage rights. Oh, not women suffrage. Uh, women uh, uh, prohibition Activism? movements. Okay. Women prohibition movements, which at some point, women prohibition movements. So the thing with them that uh, was they weren't just women prohibition movements. They were for a lot of social changes. Mm-hmm. There was then a, a guy came along came, named uh, Wayne Wheeler. I think I say he's pronounced the name. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Um, who, who's con- who's who had the same idea of prohibition, but he cared about one thing and only one thing: prohibition. He would do if it involved prohibition. He would do it if it was anything else. He w- it, he didn't matter to him. So what he would so he so while women's while the women's prohibition movement had a bunch of other objects they were trying to get past, mm-hmm. like um, educate education for children and all other type of stuff, a bunch of other good mm-hmm. reforms. He only cared about the alcohol. And so he was he was able to push that 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 more narrow goal through rather than well, it he did it in questionable means. One of them being um, so. Let's say you're going to vote. You you're you're running as a you're running for office or something. What this guy does is he's a very influential person, Wayne Wheeler. His uh his whole thing was hey. Do you do you support prohibition? If you don't, I'm going to end your political chances. Mm-hmm. So then you had both sides of the argument, both be like you had both parties, both of the major parties at the time were both saying that they're prohibit, they're both of prohibition because they didn't want to deal with Wayne Wheeler destroying their political chances because he could do that. Mm-hmm. So they were both. So even people rather who- than make an enemy of of a guy who's got like basically don't make an enemy of the media or something like that if yeah. you don't have to. Yeah. So he basically just got P. Uh, uh, what's what's Wait, the word, word I'm looking for? He, yeah, he basically bullied people into prohibition. Many people who were big proponent, who owned alcohol businesses and everything like that, mm-hmm. would become pro- uh, would become prohibitionists when they went to run for office because Wheeler was forcing them to. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, yeah, don't make an enemy of the media. Yeah. So it was so that not, that, not if, if I'm gonna get elected. So that was like his entire thing. Mm-hmm. He was trying to get prohibition banned. He got it banned at first. But he realised... So he got it banned uh, slightly before... A bit before World War Two. But it was banned by laws. And he knew... Laws are quite a lot easier to change than an amendment. So, when the World War Two started, he used a lot of propaganda. Actually, he just used propaganda about the whole time. I'm not, I just don't even know if I want to talk about all the propaganda he did. Because well, he basically portrayed alcohol as the enemy to every single group in the entire world. People mm-hmm. who were concerned about foreigners, he blamed them, he blamed alcohol for all their problems. Yeah, he, he blamed because, it. You see, all of these people coming from from, uh, from other countries, they're all drunkards. Yeah. And your, and your children, they're drunkards too. <laughs> yeah. So it's like he did that. Uh, for people who wanted to, who were f- all for immigration and wanted more people to come into the country, he was like, look at all this alcohol keeping these people down. We need to get rid of it so they have a chance to survive in America. So he would be going to all of these different places where people hated each other and st- changing his story to fit the propaganda of what he wanted just to ban alcohol. Mm-hmm. It was... Very, I don't know why he hated alcohol so much. I kind of want to look into that because it seems like an awful lot of work to ban one particular thing. Maybe he tasted it when he was young, like I did. And it was like, oh, it was disgusting. I hate this stuff. Yeah, I don't know, but um, so he, again, we're well, at the start of world, at the start of the world wars or World War Two. Uh, alcohol is made out of farm goods like potatoes and wheat and all that type of stuff. You can make alcohol of all that. So at the start of the World Wars, when resources were becoming scarce, uh, the government put a ban on produce, like 
uh, pre- prevented alcohol production because it was wasting potent- useful food that was needed for the water effort. Also, you can make ethanol out of that too for fuel. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can make it with. There's like a lot. There's a lot more useful war products you need than alcohol. Mm-hmm. Alcohol is not that useful in wars. Mm-hmm. So they decide they put a bunch of restrictions on it. When those restrictions came, it became much easier to get the concept across of hey, let's just ban it. So and that is when after most of the people in political power were people who got who were. It's not bribed, but coerced into being ab- uh, prohibitionists by Wheeler. Now they're all in government office. And so he's like, let's propose that we put the 18th Amendment in place to ban alcohol. Because he knows that once once his power leaves the office, like, mm. because he, don't, he can't control, he can't have like all the all this support forever. Well, to put an amendment in place, you need a two-thirds majority vote. That's really hard to get. So if we if we put the if we put the Eighteenth Amendment in place, well, we'll just we, they just can't do anything. The, the alcohol will be banned forever, and we will save the country. Uh, problems with that? It was yeah okay. So Eighteenth Amendment alcohol was banned. The selling of alcohol was banned, not the consumption of it. So once you have the alcohol, you're fine. If you if you own the alcohol, you were fine. If you sold it, you were in trouble. Oh, that's where all the moonshine came from then. All the whole producing producing yeah. alcohol was also banned. Like just producing it was also banned. But if you produced alcohol, it was hard to te- it was hard to find someone. You had to like have proof that they were producing it themselves. If they just had it, I mean, if you had alcohol saved over, like there were some people who would who just when prohibition started, they just brought like crates yeah. worth, crates worth and had ten years of alcohol and they just yeah. use, and they just use that. Yeah, you've got that. But there's also the whole like. Well, so long as I don't get caught buying it, I'm good. Yeah, uh, med- alcohol was allowed for medical purposes, which meant there were a lot of doctors who, uh, the amount of people who were coming in for treatment uh, increased a lot. There was a lot of people who were going to doctors. I've got treatment. a headache. I need some spirits. Okay. Yeah. So there was there was a, there was a lot more doctor visits for alcohol. Um, there was also a lot of um, a lot more. Uh, what's the word? Um, uh, religious alcohol was allowed too. Oh, okay. Religious alcohol was allowed for uh, mass and everything, and Catholics and Catholic things. So now there's a lot of Catholic priests. A lot of people signed up to be Catholic priests. Hmm. And there was definitely no way that these Catholic priests would go after ch- after church services and sell alcohol to people. There's absolutely zero chance that was happening. At no, all. no, no, no. And, and you aren't selling it either. We just we we're, we're, we're going to take communion. But rather than using the grape juice that is often used in churches nowadays. We're just going to use full wine glasses. <coughs> <coughs> and, I mean, I mean that's, that's selling alcohol right, yeah. was banned. But, I mean, there's nothing stopping like, There's nothing stopping you from, I don't know, uh, someone deciding, you know, selling alcohol is banned, right? Grape juice isn't banned. What is it? And, and what is old grape juice? Yeah. That's wine. So, no, so, it's, like, <laughs> so it's like, here, let me sell you this block of, con- of consolidated grape juice. It's like yeah, and and on, and on this box it will say warning: do not mix with water and leave in a dark cupboard for a few months, because then you will have wine. <laughs> right. It's like it's like warning: don't do this because then you will get alcohol. Mm-hmm. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah. See, uh, slight political commentary, but like with the whole warning labels. Why is it that the warning labels of the 1800s were wink, wink, if you, it, if you do this, you have alcohol, whereas now the warning label on the car is don't drink the battery in the fluid. Uh, don't drink the battery fluid. Uh, <laughs> I mean, one, regulations and all that, and it's, uh, you didn't get sued as much for... Mm. Uh, you didn't tell me I shouldn't drink the battery fluid. Yeah, there was, uh, frivolous lawsuits were... A lot harder to come by, and people weren't so particular about. Oh, let's make sure we have zero chance of being sued. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, that's just like some of the fun stuff you have with prohibition. All that weird stuff. You also had speakeasies. Have you ever heard of well, that? I, I do remember though on that though. Dad, Dad, t- talking talking about before because he makes um, freezers and such. On on these freezers and such, they have to say not for storage of explosives. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that like 
Okay. <laughs> and someone's oh, okay. Here's the thing: every rule in place is because someone has done it before. Yeah, I think the reason why Mocha is because on those particular freezers, technically the coolant that they use is flammable. And so, if you if you store something that could uh, uh, could introduce a flame in there, there's we aren't saying that our freezer won't also explode, because in its context, you aren't supposed to be storing fire in it, so don't yeah. try. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, like that's just the, like with th that's all the legal ways of getting alcohol being buying it from doctors, mm -hmm. pastors, and uh, buying uh, great boots with suspiciously specific warning labels. Mm -hmm. uh, those are all. Those were the legal ways of getting alcohol. There was also speakeasies. A speakeasy? A, a speakeasy was basically, it was just a bar that didn't, that said it was, that didn't say it was a bar. We are a karaoke joint. Yeah, and you could go buy alcohol there. Why is it, why is it, why is everybody singing so badly? Because no one here can sing. It's not the drunk. Okay, well to be, what actually ended up happening most of the time was every single person in the town knew about the speakeasy. There was one guy who went around to different towns and he was uh, doing, uh, doing prohibition and he w and he timed how long it took someone to offer him a glass of, uh, offer him a beer. Mm. I can't remember what city it was, but the record time was 35 seconds. He got to town, got in a taxi and he's like, you want a beer? <laughs> it's like, I know some good places for one. Yeah. He's like, nice. He, he he's not currently wearing a badge, which means that he's not on duty. You want a beer? Pretty much. Um, and, and also the whole thing was uh, a lot at the time. Does does this just say something about the the U.S. that like if if the government tries to regulate it, we ain't doing it. To some extent, people people were all for the regulations. Like, like, there are a lot of people who are all for the regulations. Until after. the government said you can't. Yeah, it was, it was like, people seemed super, like, the general pub the public was seemed very supportive of uh, Prohibition before it started. After it started, um, there was now a lot of complaints about it, all of a sudden. Because mm -hmm. um, it got in the way of my day-to-day -day life. Well, well, that and also because people were talking about, with Prohibition, they expected it. A lot of people were supportive of it because they wanted the best. They they were fine with it banning stuff like whiskey or things of like high alcohol content. They didn't expect alcohol content of two to five percent to also be banned with that very low alcohol content things. Because mm -hmm. especially at that time, um, a lot of alcohol content there for like for like light beers and everything. It was necessary. It was it was how you drank stuff because your water wasn't safe oftentimes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, think about putting a little bit of of alcohol in a beverage. Meant that it killed off all the bacteria in there. Yeah. So oftentimes, uh, low like. Because I think when you when you use hand sanitizer, that's just alcohol. Yeah. It's the same concept. Yeah. It was just a mix of like. So a lot of people were supportive of banning high concentration alcohol things or things that obviously people use to get drunk and all vodka. that type of stuff. Yeah, like vodka, uh, whiskey. Oh. Wrong country, but yeah. Yeah, but people were all, people were all in support of banning that type of stuff. But a lot of people in support of banning that didn't want low alcohol concentrate things like. Uh, low alcohol beer to get banned as well, mm -hmm. but that got caught up in it. I believe the regulations were anything above 0 0.05 or point oh uh, or zero point five percent alcohol content was banned, which is pretty much nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing like it, anything well, that's got enough uh, 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 enough in it to be useful for um, keeping it safe. Can't you can't use it? Yeah, but like so. Again, w w I think it was who who said it earlier about not wanting to arrest their grandpa or grandmother, grandmother. because yeah. that that became a big problem with during the prohibition movement is the police were either they would either ignore the alcohol uh, uh, people drinking alcohol because it was just such a big it was because the thing is we can't arrest half the town. Well, yeah, yeah. The, the the thing is, so Wheeler when he got the uh, prohibition thing in place, they made a spe separate office of government for the office of prohibition. But this was also a, at the time, Republican government who believed in small government spending. Mm. They believed in small government spending, which meant they gave, they had, I think their population was, they had one prohibition officer for every 65,000 people. Right, yeah, yeah. So, right, you three, you need to make sure that, the, 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 that this state doesn't drink alcohol. You've got 30 bucks, good luck. Yeah, pretty much. 
It's like, you've got three people <laughs> to stop uh, 150,000 people from drinking alcohol. Good luck. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, pe- so oftentimes people just didn't, they couldn't, the rule was in place, but does a law matter if it's not enforced? Mm-hmm. Like, the, does the laws matter if everyone just agrees that, everyone just kind of agreed that that's, this law doesn't matter? The law's there, sure, but no one really cares. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that basically comes back to, like, what, the, the, the whole foundation of the Constitution, that the government only exists because the people put it there. Yeah. And so it's like... Can- the government put the law in place, but the people are The people have decided that. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's government for the people, by the people. Yeah. Um, so, and the, so yeah, you, ask, you do have to ask questions like, if, if the people won't comply, then does it matter? Is it a law? No. This is, uh, this is the uh, very big law philosophy talk that you mm-hmm. do in... I, I've done some business law classes. The start of every business law class starts with basic philosophies of business law, mm-hmm. which talks about different ways of interpreting law, because uh, there's a lot of different philosophies on, which there's not really a fully accurate one on, like, what is law? Is law a... When you have a law, what is it meant to do? Is the law... Should the law be followed word for word exactly? Is that what the law should mean? And if the law is wrong, and your philosophy is, okay, if the law is wrong, the wording will be changed to account for all mm-hmm. the wrong issues. Or is it the spirit of the law that's supposed to be upheld? Right. So the wording doesn't matter so much. It's what the law, the spirit of the law means. And then the other, and then the other type of philosophy is, does the spirit, it's like, does, does the law isn't put in place by the people. So is it what the people want that, make, that matters in this case? Of and also does... The, does the spirit of the law, is it the spirit of when it was written or the spirit of how we see it today? Yeah, exactly. There's tons of different philosophies of law and none of those are right or wrong. It all's a, it's all it's, it, what your I mean, yeah, like, like is. this is, I tend to be black and white and say that there, there probably is one right way, but I don't know what it is. Um, yeah. It's just like, yeah, it's just a matter of, I guess that comes down to what are your, what are your laws based on? Because yeah. ultimately right and wrong has to be determined by something. Yeah. But yeah. it's again getting away from business philosophy or business law philosophy one hundred and one or just law philosophy one hundred and one. Um, the the big problem, the getting back to how prohibition relates to the whole snake cobra issue, was because it was banned. It meant that the that respectable businesses that didn't want to break the law wouldn't produce alcohol, which meant the only competition were people who were okay with breaking the law to sell. Yeah, but that but, but see that that also creates a second issue because if you if you create a law where you force the average person to break the law in order to do, uh, like like if you force the average person to be a lawbreaker in order to do reasonable activity then what you've just done is a person who would normally normally never break the law for any reason you've now forced them to take that first step yeah. and now what other laws might they be less careful about not breaking now it it can be very very dangerous um. Yeah, you've you've basically turned all of your average people in uh, uh, people into lawbreakers, and so now, well, I've broken one law. Why not break another? Uh, if it's, that, that if it's all ex- going to be the same, doesn't extend. But like the like with all the speakeasies, right? Mm-hmm. They were bars that everyone knew about. Why didn't the police go and arrest them? Mm-hmm. Because there's an obvious bar where all the people are drinking. One, a lot of those police officers went to those bars mm-hmm. because they didn't because they they drank alcohol. Mm-hmm. Two, sometimes they would be paid off. Yep. Or three, do, do you want to be the guy who goes to, uh, to the police officer to arrest everyone at the speakeasy when you know your mom and dad are there? Mm-hmm. Like, your, 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 your mom and dad are there at the speakeasy. Do you want to be the guy to go in there and arrest them for breaking the law? Or, like, your grandpa's there as well? Mm-hmm. Like, you want to be the guy who has to go arrest grandpa? I mean, that's. That's not the problem. It's going. It's going to Thanksgiving in two months afterwards. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, kind um, of. So, yeah. so like that. Like a lot of uh, there were people who were making moonshine and all that, and people would know about it. Mm-hmm. And it was like, but people didn't want to try and arrest people for doing yeah. something that was that at the time. People was like, it's, it's like yeah, it's breaking the law, but it's not really that harmful. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people were like, I don't want to get people in massive so trouble to, for doing something that's not too bad. To to reel this back into a what's the moral of a story making laws is hard yes because you've really got to think about the consequences long term 
and the unintended side effects. I mean, I haven't even got the worst unintended side no, effects. No. Yeah, but we, we can't just say no Cobras. Because then you end up with more Cobras. You've really got to think about more well, than just actually, worst though, I think Prohibition, at, at the end result of it, was what people were drinking. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it just it doesn't it doesn't end up going going yeah, away more people were drinking, times. and also you now had crime bosses. This is yeah. where Al Capone comes in, and I'm yeah. not I'm not going to go into no, full we have, detail we have time on, on Al Capone. Um, but so, but well, whenever it comes to making any any high level decision, you really need to, to, to stop and think through not will it do what I want, but also what else will it do? Yeah. You've really got to go beyond the one issue and go and, and look at it, everything else that, that's also involved. And that's just that's just where people need to learn to think things through. Uh, um, well, the problem is that, simple. So, the, well, the problem you end up having with this type of thing, right, is when you have someone like like the fact of the matter is, I probably a lot of people in government did try and think this through. Mm-hmm. But you had Wheeler around, and a lot of people were more concerned about appeasing Wheeler. Well, that's large scale government in general that's what makes it really really hard you might be thinking it through yeah but it's hard to convey to the masses a thought through argument yeah compared to just because it's 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 so much easier to convey a simple emotional argument than it is a long thought through argument yeah and so if you are not careful as the average person to like I, I'm gonna actually think through and see more than just the the, the headline yeah. Then what what wins is the headline, not the actual, you know, why this or well, that. Yeah, that, that's that's a lot of the whole like. If we're going back to Wheeler's thing, his whole thing was to go to propaganda and convince everyone with an emotional argument mm-hmm. that uh, that uh, prohibition would save the country from whatever thing they were scared about, mm-hmm. whatever thing they feared that they, 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 they were concerned of the con- that would happen to the country. He promised them that that banning alcohol would stop it. Mm-hmm. Now. If you actually sat down and thought about it a bit, and didn't listen to what all his things that he promised he could do by banning alcohol. Yes, Moku, it is, but we don't want to go too too deep in that yeah. because we'll get shut up. Yeah. yeah, no, but it's like it's just one of those things. It's like, yeah, let's yeah. not like it's always difficult to propose any type of laws like that in the first place. Like prohibition is is a good history marker to see what happens. Like if you want to study what happens when laws are not very thoughtful. Prohibition is one that is very... It's recent enough that there's enough information that's very easy to find about. Mm-hmm. A lot of, like, old Roman laws and all that type of stuff, or a lot of old English laws, you can see the consequences of the law, but it's hard to find a lot of reliable... So, the, so, 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 so that's the thing that always gets me. You read your Bible. You read history. And you read about this happened, and then this happened. And, it's, and it all makes sense going forward. In the moment, that took four years. Yeah. Like, like, um, the, the, uh, uh, the Declaration of Independence. We sign the, the Declaration of Independence and we send it to England. And we hear nothing for almost a year. Like, it's not like we signed it and then two hours later, the, 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 no, the, and and two hours later, the the king of, of of England tweets back, "We're coming for you." <laughs> it's like we've been sitting on this for months. Like the not only has the uh, uh, the fear kind of dissipated at that point, but like we've had six to eight months that everywhere else has gone like. Yeah, we are we are really doing this, and they've started to like the idea, and gotten used to it. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, it's like stuff. Stuff is not fast. Like people say, like, uh, what, what, what people here quickly Google what's the end date of World War Two? World War Two. Because people ran like six years. No, no, because people say like the end date is World at the end of World War Two. The thing is, if you look at the time of World War Two. People did not think that it's like the the agreement was off. But 1939 was, to 1945. Yeah, people. Some people were still concerned that like, for there are still quite a few years after people were still concerned that the war could just start up again. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are now looking back saying that was the end of World War Two. Everyone there, it's like, well, we got rid of Hitler, but are there secret Nazis, you know, just just waiting to come back? 
Yeah, yeah, like, 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 like the concern was, it's like, we picture it as, okay, at that point, the war ended. Everything was over. We're going to go to the post-war period. Mm-hmm. At that point, there are people like, well, the war's officially over, but... I don't know. And then, There's still a lot well, of answer, but, unanswered questions. But then, then the Cold War came out within 10 years as well, so... Yeah, yeah. Like, the, 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 it was different tension, but it was still a lot of tension. Because basically, you ended World War II by dropping nukes. Now we have nukes. Fun. Mm. Now, if we're talking about like history, can I say something that's going to scare a lot of people? Mm. In the year two, uh, 21, uh, or 2100, is there going to be a class in early internet culture? And is this when you're going to have memes like loss, Rick Rolls, and all that be part of, of You're school. going to study Rick Rolls in high school. Yes. Is this, go- <laughs> is this going to be a part of school now? That you have to study early... You have to st- study early 21st century culture. Or for early internet culture. So, you're, so you'll so you see the early memes. That does raise the question. Not Rick Rolls no. major. But there is going to be a guy who's like, I did a major in uh, early 21st century culture. Yeah, but like... Your assignment is to go and watch three Mr. Beast videos. I is that I mean I don't know is that is, like because is, think is that, about it. Does that have enough cultural impact? No, but but but, 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 but my point is compared to other history, those will probably still exist. Yeah, it would be like going to go watch old. Um, like we can still watch like uh, we can still listen in on some of the old like 1950s stuff. Mm-hmm. Because that's when stuff was actually starting to be saved and recorded a lot more. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, like, like for me, when I was studying the Civil War, uh, actually, uh, uh, um, not not the Civil War, the uh, uh, the War for Independence, I read two or three of the Federalist Papers. Yeah, of those papers, we yeah. still have some of those. Not as met, not all of them. Do we have all of them? I think we have most of them. Yeah, uh-uh. but it's written. What about today? Let's say you know. In twenty years, and you're and you're reading about COVID, probably my my fifty years. Will you watch Trump's initial announcement? Yeah, I mean, you're gonna see as it. part of the study. Would you actually just watch the the actual announcements? Uh, yeah, that's that's always a, that's always an interesting thing because it's gonna be. I I always people find it, I, like take it from like a humorous angle of like. Again, internet culture is weird. Is it like current? Like it's just someone's going to have a major. Explaining why it was weird and where it came from. Yeah, I mean there are art majors who have to explain like the weird nineteen sixties art. Nineteen sixties had a lot of weird art. Um, mm. But yeah, is, is it just going to be one of those things where it's like, well, it's like because it seems weird because like the concept of like technically the word meme has been around since the eighteenth century. Mm-hmm. Um, the it, uh, it's not just a modern word. It was revitalized well, I, in modern terms. Who wants but. to try to explain surprise Pikachu first? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like, is that just going to be a thing we're going to have to do? Like, yeah. Is it going to be surprise Pikachu face? No, my concern is because surprise Pikachu face makes sense. Yeah, it does. Like, it, it's just, it's just. Flossing like, doesn't. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't want to think about all the weird dance stuff. Uh... But it's like, there's going to be people who have to, like,. Uh, like, what are some of the, like, the weird, obscure memes? I mean, there's the, um, the, all, all of Grumpy Cat. All of Grumpy Cat. No, um, I think the, mo- the th- only one I can think of is Loss. I don't know how many people here have seen sure it. It's a terrible meme. I hate it. Okay. But I hate it because it's basically the equivalent of an internet rickroll <laughs> that can be shown in four lines or in four in a line. Two lines, two lines, two lines, and just seeing those lines can sh- uh, show they don't them. Show them. Uh, but yeah. like, some of these memes make no make, make no sense why they exist. For example, a Rickroll. Yeah. Why is a Rickroll a thing? I mean, it's not how like, did that become a thing? I mean, it's like I'm Rickrolling people right now with my avatar. Yeah. But like, seriously, why? Why is that funny? Why has that I love become it, a that's my a thing on the internet. Yeah, I mean, I like it. 
Uh, I don't know why it started. I know, I know how. It's I- basically it's it's a, it's an in joke that the whole world's in on. Yeah, it's a rat link. Mm-hmm. It's a rat link, but it's the best type of rat link because it's the one that instead of trying to steal your data or do anything like that, it's a link that you click and you just get in a song. It's like man. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you guys not have uh, uh, "Never Gonna Give You Up" in your in your playlist? I do. Mm-hmm. I have it in my playlist. In my 100 song playlist, there's a 1 in 100 chance I get Rick Gold. Why would you do that to yourself? Because I like the song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. It's a good song. Okay, so in other words, the the new dangerous risky thing to do is take your favourite playlist and just insert a Rick Gold in it and always shuffle the playlist. Yeah. Uh, no, it's great because I know uh, Beth uh, or Sophia does that. And because of we use uh, Spotify... Um, you can listen along with other people's Spotify accounts and listen to the same songs they're listening to. I'm not doing that with you guys anymore. <laughs> no, that's the thing. Our friends have talked to, have done it before. It's like they listen onto onto best spot onto best Spotify playlist, and as they're listening into it, after about 25 minutes, Rickroll stops playing. It's great. Okay. Although best one is far more. It's far. I don't see how she actually gets the song. Because she has uh, over like a thousand hours of music. That's, in that's it. why it's a, it's a proper Rickroll because it just happens once a year. Yeah, it's like it's like she has like a thousand songs in it. So, oh uh, yeah, it's not like a thousand. She has like a thousand songs of like a compilation of like a hundred hours of uh, compiled music mm. together. Yeah. Well, I well my playlist only has like a hundred a hundred songs, which is about eight to nine hours mm-hmm. of music. Uh No. No, I'm I'm not clicking that. I'm clicking it. It's, it yeah. So I can't play it unfortunately. I can't we're talking about Vic Wars, but I can't play them unfortunately, because I, I believe that that is still all under uh ho- uh copyright stuff. And uh copyright um uh, content ID system Didn't will catch someone Rick roll Vic Astley once? Yes. People <laughs> have done it. He Rick rolled the entire Macy's Day Parade once. Mm. That was the best Macy's Day Parade ever. Okay. But yeah, so no. When I it have comes no idea to... what to talk about. Rickroll is easy to talk about, and we only have three minutes left, so I don't want to start another big discussion. Wait, you want me to do a Rickroll? No. Just <laughs> no. Look, if you if you want me to do um, something for April Fools next year, I just have to do. Is there a way? Dell, can you add audio bytes to? A texture pack. Yeah, yes you can. Do you not remember the villager April Fool's joke? Where everything was villagers? Yeah, okay. Every sound was just the villager saying grass, 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 sand, right. sand. So, pick something. Pick something to Rickroll you when you do it. <laughs> eating, eating food. <laughs> like, no. Something, something innocent. Not, not jukeboxes. Something innocent. Yeah, just like eating food and the eating food. Something like killing. Yeah, you know, honestly, when uh, 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 just just take out the uh, the creeper fuse animation or audio, so the creepers will roll you. The only problem you're gonna have with that is the creeper audio thing. I don't think you can have it play for longer than the actual audio sample plays. Yeah, but the explosion just just needs to be up. Yeah, well, the time yeah, never gonna give you and any explosion is up. Yeah. Uh, wait, I don't know if I have it saved somewhere. I still have my chemistry with Carl. If you can make that work, I will put it on the server for very puffles. Yeah. Uh, don't tell anyone about this. If they, if they, if I mean, they, we just publicly announced. We it. publicly announced it, so it will be a benefit. It will be a secret thing that people who have watched Tangent Tuesday get to know. Mm-hmm. So they'll be prepared for April Fools if we can get it to work. And if it doesn't work, oh well, I'll just have to make it, um, you know, a, we'll just a get, we'll, If it doesn't more. work, I'll, we'll just get, um, we'll use the map banner, we'll use whatever the map icon is to just put a picture of Rick, of Rick Astley's face on the, the hub. Okay. I had to check something. Uh, oh, it's a Friday, okay. Oh, it's a Friday? Yeah. What so, we well, because if it was on a Tuesday, you could start turning it just a Rick one. But we would get content ID'd immediately! Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a very popular song yeah. that has, that's been put into content ID. 
I mean, yeah, we'll we'll do something. We'll do something yeah. grateful. Okay, that's yeah. about oh, that's about where our time is up for today. Unfortunately, yep. so. Well, doggy says bye bye. Bark, bark, bark. No, nope, that's not barking. That's just trying to lick my face. Okay. Okay. Dog doesn't want to say goodbye, guys. Yeah. Okay. Okay. See you guys later. See you next Tuesday. Later.